Welcome, America. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Hope you have your coffee ready so we can jump into bathroom remodeling. Yeah, edition. we're excited to have you guys today. Thank you for joining us. So we got some good stuff for you coming up here. So today will be your designers. Yeah. James, James. Yep. I'm Jacqueline. Nice to meet you. Oops, sorry, guys. So what, uh, these are some topics that we're going to go through today, starting with what is design build. We'll get into some planning tips, kind of going through our process, all the way to the beautiful reveal of the final product and show you some of our transformations that we're super proud of. Yeah, kind of going to give you guys a, a really good overview of the whole process, uh, just some design stuff, and uh, we'll have a lot of fun here. So why listen to us? We're a design build firm and we're a little bit different than hiring a general contractor. So we'll go through some of those reasons why. Um, we do specialize in room additions, kitchens, bathrooms, and all the way up to a whole home renovation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so planning your project. Let's uh let's talk a little bit about that. All right. So setting our realistic expectations. So I know everybody loves HDTV. There's yeah. some really cool shows yeah, on there. Good they inspiration. Do, yeah. some really fun projects, some extreme projects. Um, and we do, you know, we don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but reality versus reality TV, it's different. So, um, you know, these, these projects that they get turned around in, you know, overnight, that's just not going to be the reality yeah. here uh, when we when we take on your project. Yeah, you'll definitely want to talk to a professional and give you some realistic idea on timeframes and budgets, those kind of things. So, uh, but these shows are great for getting inspiration and kind of maybe getting some ideas about colors and styles and what you might want to do. Absolutely. So let's talk about project options, right? How are you going to approach your project? So three basic ways you can see here, you can do it yourself, right? You can work with a general contractor, or the third way would be to go with a design build firm. And these are all different ways of, uh, of doing it. There's different things to consider within each and uh, different responsibilities that you'll have as, as the homeowner. Uh, obviously, if you're doing a larger project, a kitchen or, or a bathroom wall or something like that, uh, you very likely would not do that yourself. That's very complicated. There's a lot of moving pieces and a lot of things uh, that you'll need specialized people to do that kind of work. Definitely. Yeah. A lot of things can go wrong too. A lot of things can right. go wrong, you know, so you're probably either going to work with the general contractor or you're going to go with the design built firm. And these are different. They're very different processes. Uh, we'll take a look and try and explain that a little bit. Uh, so here you are, you're working with a, with a general contractor. Now you're going to notice you're the homeowner. You're right there in the middle of the screen, right? And then you've got all these people on the, uh, on the, on the outer side there. So you've got an architect, interior designer, or structural engineer, Someone's got to get materials and, and, and do the purchasing. On the other side, you've got your general contractor. Now, he's going to have subcontractors, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That is a very good way for him uh, to manage and uh, build the project. However, what you need to know about this process when you work with a general contractor is you have a, a responsibility in this process. General contractor, he's only really concerned about building the project. That's what he specializes in. That's his job. All the other parts, the architect, interior designer, structural materials, that's someone else. So you have to manage that. You have to find those people. You have to make decisions. You also have to uh, be able to convey that information back over to the general contractor. And that's kind of where it gets really complicated working with a general contractor. A lot of times when problems arise, it's kind of uh, due to that situation where something didn't get conveyed properly, or you've got so many people and it's not really coordinated well. So this is just something you have to be aware of. If you're up for the task, this maybe is a good uh, way for you to go. Um, if these are things that you're not very familiar with, then you may want to go uh, with the other uh, um, method, which would be design build. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that, you know. And one last point on this general contractor. Um, process sometimes what happens also uh you know you're trying to work this process you go see your architect you make plans uh you spend money for those plans you know maybe even five ten thousand dollars or more mm -hmm. you take it to the general contractor he needs those plans before he can give you the price right he needs to figure out what he's building you take him to the general contractor 
you find out the project is twice as much as you thought it was going to be. You now have to go back to your architect, engineer, all these people and have it redesigned to try and get it into a budget for something that you can build. So you see, it's really risky where you're spending money and you're like, oh man, that's too much. I can't do it. Back to the drawing board. And it could be a really sort of complicated in that uh, in that way as well. Uh, so let's look at, at, a, at another way of approaching your project, which is design build. And you'll notice uh, in this diagram here, so you got the homeowner there, and notice it's just one point of contact to the design build. You don't have all these different arrows going all these different directions. It's a flow one way to your de uh, design build contractor. And the design build uh, contractor is going to, they're going to um, coordinate all these other things, right. you know, right? Yeah. The architect, engineer, the materials, they're going to make sure all these things are working together uh, correctly the first time. So there's not complications. They're also going to be able to give you guidance because we have all of these under one umbrella under, you know, under C point or whatever design build contract that you might work with. We're able to get into those detailed conversations with our architect and our engineers early on and do site visits and do all this uh, discovery stuff so that we can guide you before we start getting too heavily in the plans. Right. We don't want you to spend a bunch of money and then have to redesign from the drawing board because the budget doesn't match what you were planning on spending. So we're going to help coordinate all that. So it's really, we're trying, trying to make it cohesive and easy and seamless. And that's basically what design and build does for you. Yeah, well said, James. Yeah, thank Definitely. you. And I think another point to add that I know my clients always appreciate is in this process, as James mentioned, there's so many moving parts, so many decisions have to be made. Um, and, you know, I've had clients in the past say that, you know, they've gone with just a general contractor. Mm -hmm. And then once construction starts, they're getting phone calls all throughout the day, like, hey, what do you want? Where do you want this to be? How high should we do this? What tile goes here? Most people that, you know, have jobs, that's really disruptive for their day. And they may not be able to stop and answer those questions that's that right. the contractor needs right then and there. So here at C-Point, we kind of iron out all these details well before we even send our demo crew out. So yeah. we have all these questions answered ahead of time. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that because it really clarifies we're going to really figure out every single detail in the beginning uh, to make sure everything is coordinated, everything will work. And then once we go to build it, it just allows us to really be very efficient mm -hmm. and not have a lot of questions and unknowns as we move forward. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, full service, so just being design build, basically that means we're going to help you plan everything. I think we already kind of described that pretty well. Uh, we're going to source all the materials for you. And then, of course, we're, you can see our guy in there building everything. Uh, so it's just basically one point of accountability. Uh, should anything not go right, guess what? It's us. We have to figure it out, right? So that makes it really easy, takes all the stress and burden off of you. Uh, so let's talk about, yeah, consultation, so <laughs> kicking off your project. This is how we get it started. Um, we offer a complimentary consultation where you'll have one of our designers like James or myself yeah. come to your house. We'll see the space that you're trying to transform. We'll talk to you about your goals and the details of your project. Um, and we take some photographs and some preliminary dimensions to yeah. kind of get our heads wrapped around your scope of work. Yep. So easy phone call if you guys want to get something started. Numbers right there on the screen. You can also drop your name and number in the chat box. Oh, that would be easy. Yeah. So some planning tips. Yeah. All right. So we want to talk a little bit about insurance. I know it's not the most exciting part of the process here, but it's actually really important. You know, yes. I think maybe one of the most important first steps that you're going to uh, uh, make as you're approaching your project is choosing a contractor. And these kind of things are super important because if someone gets hurt uh, on your property and, you know, if the contractor is not insured, guess what? It's your responsibility. You could be liable. You could get sued. All kinds of problems, right? So real easy just to check this stuff right from the start, right? So you're going to want to make sure your contractor's got liability insurance, they're covered for property, they're bonded. Uh, and they've got workers' compensation, right? The website that we provided for you up here, that's the California State License Board. Go to their website, put in the license number of the contract that you're you know, intending on working with. Uh, you can look them up by name also. And uh, just a little inside tip here, if you do 
you know, go through that process and you find that the license number is not matching with the company name, that should be a red flag to you because uh, that would possibly indicate that the contractor is using someone else's license number or there's something fishy going on. Right. There, right? And unfortunately, that happens much more often than we'd like it to. It does. Yeah. So uh, so just protect yourself and check this. There's a lot of great information on the Contractor State License Board website. Also, you want to make sure that they have the correct license for the job, right? There's a lot of different kinds of contractors, uh, 43 classifications of contractor here in California, right? So what does that mean, the, the correct contractor? So I'll give you a quick example. Let's say you want to put in a new water heater, right? And you're putting in a different location. Maybe you're changing the tankless or something like this. So you think you're going to call the plumber out and get the work done, right? And let's say you do that. Plumber comes out, does the work. In order to, to relocate the water heater, they also have to make a penetration through the roof. So here's where it gets tricky. So let's say the plumber does all that, water heater's working great, and then three months down the road, it starts raining and your roof is leaking where he made the penetration, right? So you think, okay, I guess I call the plumber back to get that fixed, right? Well, guess what? He's not licensed for roofing. So now there's a problem, right? And then you get into questions like, well, does his insurance even gonna cover that? Maybe it flooded and damaged the floors and on and on. It can get real complicated. So make sure you have the, the, the people that are doing the work, they have the appropriate license for the work that's being done. And it might be more than one person to accomplish a task. It, it might not just be the plumber. It might be a plumber and a roofer or things like this, right? Or work with the design build firm and we'll handle that all and we'll coordinate all that for you as well, okay? Mm -hmm. So we yeah. really value our references um, and we're really proud of them. So, so these are just a few of the places that you can go to check out uh, where people have mentioned us and give us given us some accolades. Um, and we've won a few uh, like best of Orange County. I know we've we've won that several years in a row. So we're really proud of that. Um, so feel free to check us out. You know, Yelp is a good place as well. Google um, anywhere where you can find reviews. Yeah, absolutely. So you remember, you're trying to choose a contractor or choose a design build firm or choose who you're going to work with, right? Get some references, ask to talk to some of their clients. You know, if you can go see some of the projects, even better. Um, you know, if the job sites, you go to a project and the job site's dirty and there's food wrappers, they're not cleaning up, there's safety hazards. Like these are signs like this isn't a very responsible company. Right. If you go to one of our sites and I'd be happy to take you to any one of my job sites, you're going to see it's clean, neat, orderly, organized. Uh, people are working hard in a safe fashion. Like these are the kinds of things that you want to see. So try and do that. And again, some other resources, you know, if remodeling magazines recommending a company, it's probably a good company. Yelp, those kind of things. Right. right definitely. Yeah. Very important. Oh, the bad news. You want to do that or should I? <laughs> I'm going to let you handle that one. <laughs> okay. So again, you know, you're, you're approaching a project. It's complicated. There's a lot of details. You need someone responsible to do the project for you. What we're sharing with you here is that after five years, 63% of contractors fail. You know, this graph shows all businesses, different categories. And the bottom line, the green one, that is uh, contractors. So it's a very high success rate of failure. So you don't want to start with a company, things go wrong, and then they go out of business and you're left holding this mess of a project, right? Mm -hmm. So this is just to emphasize the importance of doing your due diligence and selecting a good contractor because there's no point throwing good money after bad. Let's do it right from the beginning. Choose a good guy, get it done quick, and be happy with your projects, kind of what you're after, right? Absolutely. And Sea Point yeah. is brick and mortar. So we're located in Irvine. Um, we've been established since 1986. So we have a very long, very healthy track record. Yep. Um, I've had even clients, you know, that tell me even the contractor had finished the project, it was all the way completed a year later, you know, they had some issues, some of like what would be a labor warranty item. And they go to call back their contractor, but they're no longer in business. Yep. So they don't have anybody to come out and, you know, kind of remedy and uh, look at that warranty. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a perfect segue because at C-Point here, we do five-year warranty on our installation. Most of the products through the manufacturers are lifetime warranty. Uh, but the five-year installation warranty is huge because if anything goes wrong in that time, 
We're going to go out, investigate, find out what's going on, and make sure it gets corrected properly. Most contractors will only give you a one-year warranty. And the reason for that is because that's the minimum required by California State Building uh, Code. Right. <laughs> so anyways, uh, uh, know that. Look at the warranties, right? Uh, city permits and HOAs. Yeah. So more of the fun stuff. Yep. Um, with our projects, we always want to make sure that we're following the current building codes. Those actually change constantly. Yep. They change every year. The codes become more strict and that's based off of things that happen in the field um, where they kind of then revamp the codes to make everyone safe. They're really in place for our safety. Yeah, they're designed for safety and, and for you know energy efficiency and all these things that are important, right? Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to get building uh, permits if you're doing any sort of a substantial pro project, certainly if you're remodeling a kitchen or a bathroom uh, or anything larger than that, you definitely need a permit. Um, you may have an HOA that, that wants some paperwork filled out or some plans will help you with all of that. And you're also going to need lead and asbestos testing. <clears throat> Excuse me. That is something that's required by the state. Before we can remove any material, we need to make sure that it does not have uh, lead or asbestos in it. Otherwise, it needs to be handled in a special way to make all that happen. Right. And to keep, yeah. again, to keep our team and your, and your family safe, yeah. because during demo, we are agitating these materials we're cutting into them which then if the if those materials weren't properly tested beforehand could be making our environment unhealthy yep absolutely you don't want those airborne so we just want to manage that in a responsible way right mm -hmm. okay. so our design build process let's talk a little bit about um, how we kind of get you from point a to point b so there's a lot of different factors in our process um, we kind of start out with design consultation. So again, you'll be paired up with one of our super qualified, super capable designers. Um, we set design meetings. We get into a design agreement first and foremost. Um, that just kind of gives us all an idea of where we're landing, what our scope of work is, yep. um, so that we're all entering design on the same playing field. Yeah, we want to have some initial discussions on budgets and scope of work and make sure we're shaping this uh, for, for what you really want and for, ideally for what you want to spend for the project. Right. And so um, we do have a different approach than hiring a general contractor. We do all this legwork that James is talking about earlier up front. So before we send our demo crew out, we are, you know, crossing T's, dotting I's, figuring out all those little details. Again, so you're not getting those disruptive calls during the middle of the day, during yeah. construction saying, what do we do here? Yeah. Um, so we answer all of those details in our design phase, um, which does come before demo. Um, so once we kind of iron out all of these details, we solidify all of the materials we're going to use and the square footages, um, then we can kind of finalize the scope of work and your budget. That brings us to our final construction agreement. So that's something that um, we will execute again prior to demo. So we're really trying to answer any of those unknowns, any of those questions, especially when we get into anything like wall removal or putting in a new window or a new door, opening a new penetration in an existing wall. Um, we want to make sure we know what's behind that wall. Yeah. Is it a sheer wall? Do we need to, you know, get our engineer in, involved and kind of calculate to make sure that everything is safe and up to code? Yeah, you know, and I, I think that's a great point. And, and you know, just to sort of emphasize what you said, we're going to figure out all the details before the construction agreement, right? And we're, we're going to get all the details in the construction agreement. And the great thing about that is your construction agreement will be accurate. And that's right. You think well, that's the way it should be, right? Guess what? When you work with a general contractor, he usually starts with the construction agreement right out of the gate, right? So you know what's going to happen from that point on, right? Things are going to change. Prices are going to change, add this, and change order that, so on and so on, right? That's not fun process, right? It's not, and it can be upsetting to your budget and to other things, right? So this is really great for just sort of protecting you and make sure that we're all in agreement on what we're doing and what the budgets look like. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't, we want to minimize surprises during the construction phase. Um, as James mentioned, change orders can be you know, kind of negative um, if they're not done and handled properly. Yeah. So we try to minimize those um, so that we have a clear roadmap for your project. Yep. Yep. So from there, then we get into this great ramp up period. We're getting ready to start your project, get the permitting taken care of. 
And before you know it, we're demoing, we're getting it built and you can just sit back and relax. You know, a lot of my clients even take vacations yeah. during the time where we're building. So they come back and, and everything's done or almost that. done. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry. How much? So how much? That's a big question that everyone always asks and rightfully so. Yeah. Uh, so here's kind of a little graph that can kind of show how your project budget gets deviated into these different sectors. So really your biggest chunk, um, we're kind of guesstimating here around 48% of your cost is the labor and installation. And I do want to note at C-Point, we really are very particular in who we bring on to our team. Um, so, you know, we feel really confident again in offering that five-year warranty because our laborers um, are very skilled tradespeople. Yep. And keep in mind, you're looking at a, at a uh, bathroom of sorts here. So right. kitchen would look a little different or addition project, those kind of things would all break down a little bit different. Correct. But yep. this gives you a pretty good idea how yeah. it goes. Yeah. So, um, and then we go into our cabinetry. Um, that obviously is going to be a big part of that yeah. pie as well. Absolutely. This is a great place where you can control costs because you have some really, you know, a lot of choices here, right? So you can do stock cabinets, uh, which is very popular out in the industry. Uh, I prefer typically to go semi-custom or custom in most of my projects, but your stock cabinet's going to be your lowest cost, right? So there's some advantage there. Semi-custom kind of falls in the middle. And then of course, when we go full custom, you know, we can build anything with full custom and you're going to get the highest quality there. That's going to cost the most, right? That makes sense. So let's talk about the differences. So semi-custom, and again, this is what most clients are using in their home when they do a, a kitchen or a bathroom remodel. So you get expanded choices and styles. So talking back compared to stock cabinets, maybe you've got five doors in three colors and the cabinets only come in three inch increments, right? That's what that means, stock cabinets, right? They're sort of pre-boxed, just off the shelf, ready to go kind of thing. So semi-custom, you get expanded choices. So instead of five doors, three colors, maybe you got 25 doors in 15 or 20 colors or mm -hmm. something like this, or maybe even more. Uh, you're gonna get the best value and quality. Uh, we have size modifications uh, available to do that as well. So instead of just like a 15 inch cabinet or 18, we can go 15 and three quarters or some other number that we need to make the design work proper, right? Probably the most important thing on this, uh, actually the last two, right? So you're going to get catalyzed conversion varnish on these cabinets also. That's important because you want a good finish on your cabinets. And if the cabinet finish wears out, cabinets aren't going to look good, right? So you, that's really important to have a, a really good finish on the cabinet. And then the other thing that's important here is that you're going to have a lifetime warranty on it. So if anything does go wrong, uh, it's covered, right? Can be can be fixed, repaired, and can be taken care of easily under the warranty, right? I'll emphasize the finish again because if you have cabinets built here in California, you know there's a lot of um, just independent builders. Just a guy and he builds them in his small shop, and he finishes them on site in your home. In those situations, you're not going to get catalyzed conversion varnish finish. So this is why it's really important to go with cabinets that are manufactured to a manufacturer that right. does that, right? And we, uh, our manufacturer is out of state in Waterloo, Iowa, and that allows us to really get this good finish on the, on the cabinets. And that's really important for you to know also. Uh, so that's basically what I just described, manufacturer semi-custom. Now we're looking at manufactured custom cabinets. Again, you're gonna get catalyzed conversion to finish. And so now it's unlimited styles and, and finishes, right? So. We can dream it up, we can make it, we can make custom colors, uh, unlimited modifications to the cabinets. You're gonna get the absolute highest quality. So this is like upgrades, like, you know, uh, if you had, let's say you had walnut cabinets, we could do walnut drawers and little details like that. And then of course, you're gonna get the lifetime warranties on this as well. Uh, so tons of door styles, a lot of great door styles, um, you know, some really interesting and creative stuff, not just your basics, and um, a lot of uh, features for inside the cabinets, storage features, yep. those kind of things, right? Right. We've got laundry storage. Um, we're doing outlets in the drawers. We've got all kinds of cool things. Beverage, makeup, fridge behind the doors. So some really interesting things there. So tile options, tile right? Options. A lot of great things available in tile right now. 
endless options. Endless really. options, yeah. And kind of going back to what James was mentioning in the beginning, um, one of those benefits of hiring a professional who has experience with this, um, it's one thing to walk into, say, floor and decor and say, oh, that's pretty. I want that in my shower. But the more important question, I mean, aesthetics is very important. But beyond that, the second side of that is the, um, you know, functionality of that tile. So what is it made of? Is it a ceramic? Is it a porcelain? Is it a natural stone? Each one of those has different features and di different characteristics and different applications. So if we were doing, say, a steam shower, we wouldn't want to put a glazed ceramic in there because it is a little bit more porous than a porcelain and you're going to hold water and then over time your grout could discolor, it could mold, yeah. it could even affect the tile itself. Absolutely. So you really want a professional to kind of confirm that the materials you're selecting are appropriate for that use. Absolutely. So we're looking at natural stone. It's a beautiful material. I love natural stone. Uh, you kind of can't go wrong with the look of natural stone. However, you need to know if you're deciding to use that, it's a high maintenance material. It can stain, it can change colors, it can get water spots. There's You have to seal it. There's all kinds of things that go along with that. So we want to make sure we're advising and directing you well as we choose materials. Porcelain, pretty much indestructible. Colors, patterns, textures are amazing with what they're doing in porcelain these days. Um, personally, I like to go to porcelain when it fits the project. It's probably one of the best materials available, I think. I agree. And porcelain can offer some of those looks that natural stone can. Absolutely. Uh, but without some of those pesky maintenance items that James yep. had mentioned. And look at all the different porcelains that are in this bathroom. We got penny rounds down here. We've got, uh, you know, slabs on the wall. We've got porcelain that looks like wood on the floor. We've got pattern tile deco down there. So, so many great textures, colors, patterns in porcelain. Really good stuff. Glass style, right? Glasses can be a nice accent too. Um, I like using glass for blues and things. We're trying to pull in like ocean colors, feels is kind of nice sometimes. Uh, great material, a lot of creative textures and, and colors with glass as well. And I would mention with glass too, that again, it's really important who your installer is. Glass can be one of those beautiful tiles, but can look really bad if it's not installed properly. 100%. So there's very specific installation details, which our team yeah. are masters at. So um, you just want to be careful if you're choosing a tile installer, you know, uh, kind of what is their experience and maybe look at some of their past projects as examples. Yeah. Well, not even that. Uh, I mean, that's a great point, you know, the, the quality and so also the quality of the material, you know. Glass style A may not be the same as glass style right. B. And when it goes to install, it glass style A might not look as good as glass style B. So you want to work with a professional that understands the differences and make sure that you're getting good materials, not just something you saw that looked kind of cool that's not going to install well, right? Countertop material, right? So we're going through all the materials that you might use in your project. Uh, and there's a lot available. I would say engineer quartz is probably the number one material being used these days. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's so much versatility in it. Again, it's kind of that replacement for the natural stone with yep. the maintenance issue. And it is heat resistant and stain resistant. Yep. Heat resistant, stain resistant, no, zero maintenance, great material. Natural stone, again, much like natural stone tile. Uh, it's beautiful. It's great material. Uh, in terms of the beauty, it's not as durable. It's much higher maintenance material. Uh, so these are just some things that we want to think about as we plan where we might use those projects, uh, products or where we might want to try and avoid them. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. So real time okay. bathroom. Yeah. Some good projects here. Um, so maybe you want to talk about this one a little sure. bit. Yeah. Uh, so this client, the goal was to create an open space, kind of more airy feel, mm -hmm. um, clean, bright, somewhere that you enjoy getting ready in the morning right. before your day. Um, obviously, we are big fans of cohesive and functioning design, yeah. um, and we do have a lot of people that come in kind of wanting that spa oasis for their yes. primary bathroom. Absolutely, right? So I remember this one, uh, and you know, as you can see, they have the glass block there, the, uh, the shape's a little, you know, not really current, glass block's a little dated, and so we just wanted to modernize this and open it up. And so in doing that, we took out the glass block. We also took out the corner post that you're seeing at the end of the shower there. 
So sometimes this is a structural uh, issue. Mm -hmm. It requires structural work to, to do that. In this case, it was non-structural and we were able to do that easily. But this is something that, uh, you know, we can't just take it out. We need to look at it, examine it, make sure we're doing the, the correct thing before we get too far. So we're going to start with as-built floor plans. And so this is what uh, the bathroom looked like prior to construction. Here is the proposed plan on the right, showing the shower with no walls around it. We just had a nice glass surround, uh, changed to a freestanding tub, and a nice vanity setup also. Here are the elevations. So you're seeing um, cabinet details, you're seeing shower details, mirror heights, sconce locations, things like that. And, utilities. Yep, utility plans, electrical uh, switches and whatnot. And then here we get into the 3D renderings, right? So this is always the fun part when your client can see the whole thing in 3D. Wow, that's what my bathroom is going to look like, right? We want to put all your materials in here, have it dimensionally and spatially correct, and really get it, take a look at what it's going to look like there. And this is such an important step, I think, that Again, you're not going to get with the general contractor. This is Correct. something that's very much design build. Um, this is kind of what we're working towards and getting all of your materials together and selected. Yep. And, you know, this is the the last chance to kind of see it all together before we, you know, invest in, in having it built. So if there are any changes, this is the time to make those changes. Yeah. And I remember, you know, this client, and, you know, you can see the gold and the, the niche in the shower was kind of bold. And she's like, oh, are you sure we should do that? And I was like, yeah, you know, absolutely. This is going to look great. Yeah. And she trusted me and she thought, okay, yeah, it's going to look good. And we did it and she loves it. It so, does look phenomenal. Yeah. We'll show you the finished product. Yeah. Some more renderings here for you. And material selections here. Nice palette. And wow, there's the finished. Gorgeous. Look what a difference. Shower. Yeah. So much nicer can't even recognize it. And look right. how great that gold turned out in the it back of the niche. Out really nice. Yeah. Really Stunning. proud of this bathroom. Clients love it and are enjoying it. So definitely well done. Yeah. Nice contrast on the cabinet there. Bringing in some warmth. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll go to another one here. So here's your befores, right? old granite top, the old oak, oak. cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> we see a lot of that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> wow, what a transformation, right? Look at that. Clean, bright, yeah. airy, cohesive. Another before. Uh, I'm sure many of you out there have seen this white tile. We're tearing that stuff out oh, yeah. left and right. And people are happy to get rid of that. And there's the after. Wow, much more modern. Love what they did with the floor in there. Some good contrast in the cabinetry. Very interesting. Again, before, carpet in the bathroom, right? <laughs> <laughs> and wow, look at that transformation, right? Absolutely beautiful. This one, they had a shower you'll see on the left photograph. Really just plopped in the middle of the space. And then across from that was this uh, jacuzzi tub that you see in this monster tub deck. So there was really just minimal space to walk from vanity to vanity. So we uh, deleted that shower stall and created a huge shower stall for them where the tub was because they were never going to use their tub. Um, and that's where, again, design build is great because we can really customize how you use your space. Pink. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. What a transformation that there, be right? Difference. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Before and after. Really nice. Timeless, I would say. Yeah. It's so much brighter. Love the contrast. Yeah, this was a fun project. Industrial farmhouse, we kind of created, we had a lot of fun with texture and pattern and the contrast of the matte black. Yeah, all the light. I can see the texture in the shower walls. That's really nice. And like I said, the contrast with the black is really nice as well. 
Or so dark. Land. Wow. Look what a difference. Love the tub. Uh, again, the tie-ins with the cabinets and the, and the window trims. It's really great. And after. <laughs> yeah. Created a wet space for so the whole, the tub, the shower, all of it was all one wet room. Yeah. So if you think your bathroom's horrible, it, proof right here, man, we can make it look gorgeous, yes. right? Any space. And just, yeah, this one too had a bunch of walls and just it really kind of dissected the space up into little compartments. Yeah. So we knocked down the walls that were non non load bearing. Yeah. Uh, so it was not a structural project, and we we're able to kind of open up this space as you see here. Wonderful. So let's talk. So I know some of you are interested in doing a project. If you haven't maybe known where to start, obviously give us a call. We can help you out, or at least answer some questions to maybe you know, give you a good direction, right? Um, so do we have a few questions here? Let's oh, see. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So design trends, um, what are we noticing for design trends and bathrooms nowadays? I would say definitely keeping on that same theme of the light and airy. We really, yeah. you know, it's nothing's worse than a dark bathroom, yeah. you know, especially for us ladies doing our makeup. We want to, you know, be able to see ourselves, see the true colors. So I definitely would say the airy feeling kind of spa oasis yeah. retreat. I mean, if you think about it, your kitchen and your bathroom are really the two spaces in the home that we spend most of our time in. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So creating that oasis for yourself yeah. is definitely on trend, I yeah. would say. I would say also in a smaller bathroom, a lot of people are getting rid of tubs. Have you seen that also? Yeah, definitely. They say, we don't use it, yeah. we don't need it. And so a lot of people are making some really nice showers. Uh, that's another trend I, I would say yes. I noticed that. Uh, common right now too. yeah yeah uh, so we've got another one here should i incorporate a freestanding tub into the bathroom yeah i mean it's a beautiful option yeah. we've got so many cool shapes and you can do that really beautiful matte finish or the fun high gloss finish yeah. um so those are really great i would say consider you know who's using this tub so if it's a person that um you know is trying to age in place I would say maybe not a freestanding tub as it is a little difficult to get in and out for an older person. Um, so really, you know, it, it is really custom on who's using this at the end yeah, of the day. I, I agree. You know, in that function, that's key. Uh, I would agree because the height probably is harder for an uh, older person. But in general, sometimes the big tub decks are hard to get into also. Yes, so true. there could be some functionality where there could be an advantage uh, to switching to a freestanding tub. And I like that it just opens up space in the room and it's a nice focal point. And, and a lot of the, the tubs are really beautiful pictures. So a couple more questions. Um, yeah. So uh, somebody asked if the homeowner has to select from our specific tile collection. So you can see a little teaser behind James and I. Um, we do have a beautiful showroom located in Irvine. That's where we're going to do all of our design meetings and where we can select our materials from yep. cabinets to tile to countertops to flooring yep. and to the fixtures and hardware. So um, it's a really great place to jumpstart the project and the selection yep. process. Yep. Um, we have quite a bit to offer here. However, if you find a tile, you know, at on tile row one weekend and you decide to go spend some time there, we can absolutely implement that into your design. We are not limited to what's in our showroom, although we do have quite a bit. Um, and then for the fixtures, we do have a fixture specialist. So after we've designed your project, selected all your materials, we have a fixture meeting with our fixture specialist. And we're able to really kind of give you uh, really detailed options on coordinating all the different fixtures for the bathroom, all the way down to the cabinetry hardware. Um, and being a distributor, we're able to kind of pass on some of our savings and our discounts to you. So again, you can also supply your own fixtures if that's what you choose, um, but you do want to consider the warranty again. So um, with plumbers, a lot of time, if they supply the material, then they will warranty it. So sometimes if you supply it as the client, Sometimes that doesn't get covered in a warranty. So, yeah, well, I would say that I think all that is 100% accurate. But the other thing that I thought of right away was just for ease. Like if we're supplying everything, if there's any issue, it's no worry for you. We have to handle it. If you're providing tile and then there's not enough or the box is broken or yeah. So 
it could end up being a headache on your part. And, and that's what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to make everything easy for you, source everything, make sure we got good materials and, and everything's there when it needs to be, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, looks like we have a couple more. So what's the average build time for a small downstairs bath, shower, toilet, vanity, et cetera? I would say it varies depending upon the space, right? But I would say usually I'm seeing about seven weeks. That's fair. Could go a little longer, could be a little shorter, mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of work to do, right? Uh, and it all needs to be done in a very specific order mm -hmm. and needs to be checked at the end of each phase. And so that's about what it's going to take. Yeah. yeah. And I, we have another question here. Um, what's a good budget range for a small bathroom? So sort of echoing what James just said, mm -hmm. I think both of these, the time and the budget mm -hmm. really depends on the size of the mm -hmm. space and the scope of work. Yep. Um, so that's going to dictate both of those numbers. Yeah. I mean, the budget's really, I know everyone, that's what everyone wants to know. And really the best way to answer that is let us come out and take a look at it and let us give you something fairly accurate to work with rather than just you know, it's a big range. So we don't want to, right. we don't want to steer you wrong by giving you an answer. That's not correct. Let us take a look at it. We'll advise you best with what we think the budget's going to be. And, and you can make decisions. Absolutely. That. Each yeah. project is totally different mm -hmm. and unique. And um, we don't have any ones that are exactly the same. So that answer sort of does differ on, on every project. I think that's the best way to answer it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any other questions? Looks like there's yes. just one more. How can I, how can I get an appointment? That's easy, right? Uh, our number's up on the screen there. And uh, feel free to put something in the chat if you want to reach out to us to, to give you a call back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, everyone. We so appreciate you joining us this morning on our bathroom web webinar. Yeah, thank you. Have a great have day. Have a great day.